Good morning, happy Sabbath, church. Good morning. Uh, before I start, I'd like to have another word of prayer. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you again for this beautiful Sabbath day that you gave us. It may not be beautiful outside, but it's beautiful because we're here, Lord. I ask that you be with me now and that the words that come out of my mouth be not mine, but yours. In your name we pray, amen. amen. Before I start, I just want to thank my friend Holden for driving down here with me. We had a long drive this morning, but we were here. We made it, so we're happy to be here. And also to my father for coming as well. He had a long drive as well. Now, today, uh, y'all are going to need two things, your Bible and your imagination, all right? Now, I know it's really, really ugly outside, but I just want y'all to imagine for one second that it's super sunny, you're in a beautiful, peaceful meadow, and you're on a trip to your favorite vacation spot. Mine is Puerto Rico. I don't know if walking to a meadow will get me there because I need to swim, but, you know, it's mine. But just think... You know, you're walking peacefully, everything's great, and boom, you've fallen. You're falling, you're falling, you're falling, and you land on a thud. You look around, you can't see anything. It's pitch black, and you can't seem to find your way out. Now, you swear you knew what you were doing. You know where you were going. You've been there a thousand times. You were paying attention, but now, here you are, stuck in a hole. Our life of sin is that whole. Our understanding, or lack thereof, of the call of God has gotten us into that hole. Now, as you look around in this hole, you see what you're most afraid of. You see what's been bothering you. You see that situation that keeps you up at night. What do you do? It feels as if the walls around you are crumbling down, and you have no escape. Life is stressful. There's no way around it. No matter at what point of your life you are, there is going to be stress. For many, it can be work, responsibilities, financial needs, sickness. Today it was Atlanta traffic. <laughs> there is an abundance of obstacles and detours that are sent our way that get us trapped in these holes of despairs. But now, sometimes we think, it's not our fault we're in these holes. Bell and White says, it is the love of self that destroys our peace. Often we ourselves are the reason that we end up in this hole, blinded by our own ambitions, because we ended up taking the wrong step. Today, we're going to focus on a step-by-step process of getting out of these holes of sin and despair and finding peace in our Lord. There are many, many, many Bible stories full of adversities and plenty of examples of people finding peace in God. But my personal favorite is Joseph. If you'll open your Bibles with me to Genesis chapter 37, we will be starting there. Genesis chapter 37. Okay, I'll be reading from verse, starting on verse 3. Now, Israel loved Joseph more than all of his children because he was the son of his old age. Also, he made him a tunic of many colors. But when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all his brothers, they hated him and could not speak peaceably to him. So this is our intro to Joseph. Um, he was his favorite son. I don't know if I'm the favorite. Can you confirm that? No. None of my siblings are here, so if you want to say that, you can. But I don't think there's any hatred between us. Usually, we're pretty, we're pretty peaceful. Um, we're pretty peaceful siblings. But obviously, Joseph's brothers did not like him. And he was given the gift of dreams, which now they don't even like him more. So we're going to skip ahead to verse 18, where they confront their brother. Now, when they saw him... Afar off, even before he came near them, they conspired against to kill him. Then they said to one another, Look, the dreamer is coming. Come, therefore, let us now kill him 
and cast him into some pit, and we shall say, Some wild beast has devoured him. We shall see what will become of his dreams. But Reuben heard it and delivered him out of their hands and said, Let us not kill him. And Reuben said to him, Shed no blood, but cast him into this pit which is in the wilderness, and do not lay a hand on him, that he might deliver him out of their hands and bring him back to his father. So it came to pass when Joseph had come to his brothers, they stripped Joseph of his tunic, the tunic of many colors that was on him, and they took him and cast him into a pit. And the pit was empty, and there was no water in it. And they sat down to eat a meal. Then they lifted their eyes and looked. And there was a company of Ishmaelites coming from Gilead with their camels bearing spice, balm, and myrrh on their way to carry them down to Egypt. So Judah said to his brothers, What profit is there if we kill our brother and conceal his blood? Come, and let us sell him to the Ishmaelites, and let not our hand be upon him, for he is our brother and our flesh. And the brothers listened, and the Midianite traders passed by. So the brothers pulled Joseph up and lifted him out of the pit, and sold him to the Ishmaelites for twenty shekels of silver, and they took Joseph to Egypt. Then Reuben returned to the pit, and indeed Joseph was not in the pit, and he tore his clothes. And then he returned to his brothers and said, The lad is no more, and, and I, where shall I go? So they took Joseph's tunic, killed, a, killed a, um, a kid of goats, and dipped the tunic in blood. Then they sent the tunic of many colors, and they brought it to their father and said, We have found this. Do you know whether it's your son's tunic or not? And he recognized it, saying, It is my son's tunic. A wild beast has devoured him. Without doubt, Joseph is torn to pieces. Then Jacob tore his clothes, put sackcloth on his waist, and mourned his son for many days. And all his sons and daughters arose to comfort him, but he refused to be comforted. And he said, For I shall go down into the grave to my son in mourning. Thus his father wept for him. Now the Midianites had sold him in Egypt to Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh and captain of the guard. So, let's analyze Joseph's situation. What did he do to deserve to be sold into slavery? Why was he put in a hole? Because he was the favorite? Because he had a nicer coat? Sometimes we ourselves could be thinking we're living the perfect life and still end up in that same hole. The devil is not going to try and attack us when we're already down. It's a waste of his energy. Why would he come after someone who's already fallen? He attacks those full of the Spirit of God because those are the ones he needs to keep away from God. He wants each and every one of us to be stuck in these holes, stressed, desperate, and as far as God from, as possible. And so we get to the first step, asking for a ladder. The first step in the hole is quite simply asking for help. Easier said than done. I myself am a victim of that. I always refuse to ask for help for anything. I'm like, I got this. I got this. And then you never have it. But in Psalms 139, verses 23 and 24, it says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxieties and see if there's any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. God is there waiting to help, but we get distracted so easily. We start to think God is too big for this problem. I was having this conversation with my friend earlier. We made a wrong turn and we ended up driving through this small town to get back in the highway. And I was like, wow, we would have never gone through here if we didn't make this wrong turn. And he's like, right, the world is huge. And when you think about it, it really is. And then when you think on yourself, you think, why would God care about my problems? There are so many people in this world. Does he have time for me in the billions of prayers? Am I a lost cause? Will I ever find peace? In all the chaos, chaos of this world, we need to seek the voice of God like when Elijah was looking to hear the voice of God. He was not the strong wind that tore through the mountains. He was not in the earthquake or the fire, but after all transpired, he heard a small, still voice in the calm. Open your ears to God, because he is calling to you and offering you a way out, a ladder. But you need to come to him as well. We get comfortable in the hole. Well, these crumbling walls aren't that bad. I've been in worse places than this. I think I can get used to the smell. I'm stressed all the time. 
Nothing is going to change that. It's just a part of life. But that hole that you are in is not what God envisions for your life. That is not what he wants for us, to be constantly stressed, to be constantly in despair. That's not what he planned for us. When we ask God for the way out, he gives us a ladder. But we also need to realize we need to drop the shovel. He is the way out, not us. As humans, we try and say to ourselves, maybe if I dig sideways, I can make a makeshift staircase, get myself out. When in reality, we're making the hole deeper. Ellen White says, it is the love of self that destroys our peace. Jesus clearly says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Not there's another way, not your way. Not your way is truth and life. His way is truth and life. Happiness drawn from earthly sources is as changeable as varying circumstances can make it. But the peace of Christ is constant and abiding peace. We can do our best to dig and dig and build and try and find our way out or just give up and stay comfortable in that hole. But there is hope. The second that we ask God, he will send down his ladder to save us. In Matthew chapter 7, verse 8, it says, For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, it will be opened. Whenever, wherever you are, no matter how deep the hole you are in, even if the walls are shrinking in on you, call to the Lord for the ladder and he will rescue you. Part two. Okay, so now what? Now what? You got your ladder. Well, it's obvious. You climb up. You're excited. You finally listened to God. You called upon him and he saved you. He provided you with a way out. It's going to be easy now. Just a quick climb and you're out. So you're climbing. You're super pumped up. You're going. Then you realize you've been climbing for a while. Your arms and your shoulders start to get sore. Your back starts hurting. What's happening? Didn't God give me this ladder to get me out of this hole? Why am I still tired? What's taking so long? Why am I still hurting? Isn't this supposed to be easy? Unfortunately, it's not. Now, let's, let's check back to see how Joseph's doing and reopen your Bibles with me to chapter 39 of Genesis. Now Joseph had been taken down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of guard, an Egyptian, brought him from the Ishmaelites who had taken him down there. The Lord was with Joseph, and he was a successful man. Let's pause right there. Joseph is still in this hole, but where's the Lord? The Lord was with Joseph, and he was still a successful man. And his master saw that the Lord was with him. I don't know about you, but I, when people see me, I want people to think the Lord is with him and be successful because of him. And his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord made all that he do prosper in his hand. So Joseph found favor in his sight and served him. Then he made him overseer of his house and all that he put under his authority. So it was from the time that he made him overseer of his house and all that he had, that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sakes. We can be blessings to other people just off of our sakes. Someone may not believe in God. Someone may not want to listen. But just being in their life can be a blessing to them as well. Thus he left all that he had in Joseph's hand, and he did not know what he had to expect for the bread which he ate. Now Joseph was handsome in form and appearance, and it came to pass after these things that his master's wife cast longing eyes on Joseph, and she said, Lie with me. But he refused and said to his master's wife, Look, my master does not know what is with me in the house, and he has committed all that he has to my hand. There is no one greater in this house than I, nor has he kept anything from me but you, because you are his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and still sin against God? 
It could have been easy for Joseph to do this. He said, I'm, I'm the top. There's no one else other than Potiphar except for me. Potiphar doesn't even check on me. If I wanted to, I could, and I wouldn't get caught. But still, he did not because he, wouldn't, he did not want to sin against God. So it was, as she spoke to Joseph day by day, that he did not hear her to be with her, to hear her or be with her. But it happened about this time when Joseph went in his house to do work, and none of, the me- none of the men of the house was inside, that she caught him by his garment, saying, Lie with me. But he left his garment in her hand, fled, and ran outside. And so it was when she saw that he had left his garment in her hand and fled outside, that she called to the men of the house and spoke to them, saying, See, he has brought in to us a Hebrew to mock us. He came into me to lie with me, and I cried out with a loud voice. And it happened when he heard that I lifted my voice and cried out, that he left his garment with me, fled, and went outside. So she kept his garment with her until his master came home. Then she spoke to him with words, saying, The Hebrew servant whom you brought to us came into me to mock me. And so what happened? I lifted my voice and cried out, and he left his garment with me and fled outside. So it was when his master heard the words which his wife spoke to him, saying, Your servant did to me after this manner, that his anger was aroused. Then Joseph's master took him and put him in prison, a place where the king's prisoners were confined, and he was there in prison. Now, Joseph must have thought, I'm surely out of this hole. Yeah, I was thrown into slavery, but God still blessed me. I'm still faithful, and now he's in prison. A lot of the times, we can still be doing the right things. We're still on the right track. But like I said before, the devil is not going to attack you when you're low. He will attack you when you're high. He does not want us close to God. So the closer we are to God, the more he is going to fight. The path of the Christian is not one of light burden. The climb out of this hole is a long and treacherous one with obstacles and with pain. But God is still with us through the pain and is there to make your burden light. Jesus says, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden. I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and lean from me, for I am a gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest in your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. As we climb and keep climbing, it's easy to start to lose hope yet again. Why did God do this? Did the devil add extra steps? Why is the devil attacking me? The devil this, the devil that. But God does not allow Satan to touch any of his children without his permission. Sister White says, The trials of life are God's workmen to remove the impurities and roughness from our character. God uses any means necessary to give us what is truly best for us. The well-known saying is, God will not allow anything you can't handle. And it is the truth. God made you in the womb. He knows you better than you know yourself. He knows your fears, your hopes, and most of all, your limits. But we can be blind to the blessing when it's right above us. God could be trying to bless us, but we still think that the devil is attacking us. That is not true. God uses that to make us stronger. Again, Sister White writes, but when the tribulations come upon us, how many of us are like Jacob? We think that it is the hand of the enemy, and in the darkness we wrestle blindly until our strength is spent and we find no comfort or deliverance. Sometimes we end up fighting God thinking we're fighting the enemy. Just like Jacob, we wrestle all day and all night when what we were wrestling was our blessing. God sent us the ladder when we're in the hole. He knows how long it's going to take. And we shouldn't argue and complain to God when you're in the midst of receiving his blessing. Let's continue in verse 21 of chapter 39 to see what Joseph does in prison. But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy, and he gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. Once again, When Joseph is in the hole, God shows favor on him. He does not abandon him, not once. In every situation that Joseph was put in, he continually trusted in God, and God continuously blessed him in all circumstances. 
And the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hand all the prisoners who were in the prison. Whatever they did there, it was his doing. Again, put all the way up in the highest position because he trusted in God. The keeper of the prison did not look into anything that was under Joseph's authority because the Lord was with him. And whatever he did, the Lord made it prosper. As you make the climb, remember, God is continuing to bless you. And that no matter the situation, he knows what is good and what you need. And he will continue to make you prosper. The last step. One step at a time. Now, we understand the climb is going to take a lot from us. But we know that it's a part of God's plan. When we take one step at a time, it gives us that time to build our relationship with God and attain the constant peace he can offer us throughout the journey. Even though Joseph faced many trials and was thrown into holes many times, God never abandoned him and set him up in the best possible situation for him. Because of God's grace, Joseph again won the favors of his superiors in prison. And we're going to be continuing in Genesis 39, 21 to 23 to see how Joseph ends up. One day, two high-ranking servants in Pharaoh's house had been thrown into prison as Joseph to interpret the dreams they had the night before. Joseph gave them interpretations which came to pass. One was set free and returned to his previous position as the king's cupbearer but the other was killed. Joseph asked the cupbearer to remember before Pharaoh, but unfortunately he forgot. Two years later, the king had a couple of disturbing dreams. It was then that the cupbearer recalled Joseph's gifts of dreams of interpretation and told Pharaoh, testifying of his own experience. Sorry, I'm summarizing. I didn't want to have to read all the verses. I just realized that now. Sorry. (laughs) The king called Joseph... And narrated his dreams. Joseph gave the interpretations, which revealed that there would be seven years of plenty and followed by seven years of famine in Egypt. Then Joseph counseled Pharaoh to prepare for his famine by storing grain, which this is all found in Genesis chapter 41, 1 through 37. Pharaoh was so impressed by Joseph's wisdom that he appointed him ruler of all Egypt, only below Pharaoh. Joseph got married, he had two sons, and carried out his role of governor storing up food during the years of plenty to sell to the Egyptians, neighboring nations during the famine. So as we can see in Joseph's story, wherever he was, God was with him. When he was in the deepest part of the hole, God was with him. When he was leader of Potiphar's house, God was with him. When he was in prison again, God was with him. And when he was leading Egypt, God was with him. In Psalms 46, verses 1 and 2, it says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Even though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though its waters roar and be troubled, and though the mountains shake with its swelling. God is there for us through everything. You know, at Southern, I'm like known as the chill friend, right, Holden? I, I would say that. It was like, oh, why are you so chill, you know? Why aren't you stressed? Why aren't you this? I got God. What, what, why be stressed? We, there's already enough physical stress. You don't need to emotionally stress yourself. And it says, God is our refuge and strength. He says, not fear, even though the earth be removed. What problem of yours is bigger than the whole earth being removed or the mountain shaking? And it says through all of that, we should still not fear because he is our strength. In Matthew 6, verses 25 to 26, it says, Therefore, I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body or what you will put on. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds in the air, for they they neither sow nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more valued than they? The Lord will never fail you in your hour of suffering and need. 
In Philippians 4.19, it says, And my God will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. And going back to the verse uh, for today, I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. Whenever you are in the holes of life, remember, first ask for that ladder. And what is the ladder? The cross. The sins that put us in that hole were only out because of the cross of Jesus Christ, because he died for each and every one of us. And that is our way out of these holes. But then remember, we're on that cross. We must bury our cross just like Jesus did. It's not going to be easy. Our life will never be easy. But what can be easy is trusting in God. Because you can be put in these situations that are supposed to cause you stress, but you, you cannot have stress by putting it on him. And remember, we have to take it one step at a time. Relationships are not built like that. They take time. They take effort. Our relationship with God has to be the same as with a family member or someone we can see right in front of us. Because if not, we will not have the relationship and we will still stay stuck in that hole. But if we continue to learn and spend time with our Savior, he can give us the peace that we are looking for. I remember writing this sermon. It was, it was, I would say it wasn't a bad time in my life, but I thought back to a time when it was. And I was like, what got me out of it? I wish I could say it was my friends. I wish I could say it was myself. It was only God. God is the only person who can get you out of all of this. Whenever I feel overwhelmed and feel the pressure of this world, I know I can go to God for peace because he is there to support me and the rock of my foundation. As we close, I want us to all sing to him it is well and meditate on whatever you're going on in your life, whatever trials and tribulations you're going on. Leave it at the feet of Jesus. Leave it at the cross and it will be well in my soul. Thank you.